Amid fears some people with autism may lose direct access to the National Disability Insurance Scheme, the federal government has announced the creation of a special advisory group. Part of its brief will be to examine how best to decide who should qualify for automatic funding, a move that's unlikely to allay the concerns of the community. Are you dancing? Liam Fernandez was given a level two autism diagnosis, which means he needs substantial support. Liam was diagnosed in December last year. Um, we had suspicions um, because he wasn't talking. There's increased anxiety within the autism community that automatic NDIS funding for cases like Liam's could end. This is a new journey to us and it's very scary as parents. The National Disability Insurance Agency has apologised for what it says was a mistake when a document uploaded to its website no longer included Level 2s in the automatic funding category known as List A. Conditions currently on that list include intellectual disability, autism levels 2 and 3, cerebral palsy and spinal cord injury. Now the NDIA has established an advisory group to look at whether the current funding model is working. It says there will be no changes yet. I really would want to reassure people in this sector that no changes would be made to, uh, to autism um, in the NDIS without proper consultation. People on the autism spectrum make up a bigger percentage of NDIS participants than first anticipated, around 30% overall. And when you look at the under 14s, that figure rises to 50%. You can't tell a community, oh, I'm sorry, but you know, your numbers are increasing and we can't support all of you. Can I have a piece? In future, funding for children like Liam could be determined by an additional assessment. And that's an additional worry for families. It makes me sad that I have to say um, he can't talk um, and so he needs help. Barbara Miller, ABC News.